Waar is mijn zonnebril? Oh, daar. I'm traveling in Spain right now. And yesterday I left home the Netherlands on my direction to Clermont-Ferrand, which is in the middle of France. Stayed over for one night at our house. I left the house this morning around quarter past eight, heading towards Toulouse and then well, well, with some foggy weather actually and with some changing temperatures. Direction here, Zaragoza, Spain. I'm, I'm just leaving behind the mountain range that divides France and Spain, which is called the Pyrenees. Beautiful mountains, beautiful scenery actually, I must say. And I'm in the descent right now of the Pyrenees direction, Zaragoza. The idea of the travel to Zaragoza came actually actually two years ago at IWCE 2019. Ah, two th no, three years ago, 2019, when I spoke to Jose Martin, CEO of Powertrunk. So it's not only a discussion that I'm going to have with Jose Martin about Tetra in the United States. A part of the visit is also a tour around the facility, meeting some good friends, talk about the business and about the future of the business. And in the meantime, I'm diving into this tunnel here. Whoa. Another tunnel. I'm following this beautiful road that goes through all of those tunnels in the Pyrenees. And this is just magnificent. Um, it's a beautiful scenery here. But okay, this is not a video to talk about travel. This is a video to talk about business, to talk about Tetra in the United States. And to get Tetra introduced in the United States was kind of difficult, I would say. And it's because of all of the work with Jose Martin, together with the TCCA, with the late Phil Kittner, who made Tetra a success in the United States. So when you talk about critical communications, you talk about P25 in the US, right? That's the technology to go. What about transport? What about airports? There's a big playing field actually where Tetra can be used in the United States. And there are so many examples of Tetra in the United States being very successful. And I got to see those examples during the power trunk end user conference just a few years back. And I spoke to Jose about Tetra in the United States at that time. And to get Tetra going in the US was was kind of a thing. It wasn't that easy to, to deal with the frequencies. And there were some things that need to be altered to the standard. But Jose is going to talk all about that. He's going to meet me tomorrow in the hotel around 10.30, I believe. From there, there's no plan yet, but Tomorrow there will be a plan. is actually that Jose is going to pick me up at uh, 10 o'clock a.m. It's right now it's 9 30. I was awake very 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 early because of a lot of noise outside. I think at 5 o'clock a.m. they are uh, doing the the bins over here in in Spain here in Zaragoza. Um, nevertheless I caught some sleep after the monster trip yesterday. Um, it, it was just only 700 kilometers so a little bit more but it was about 11 hours drive okay i'm checking right now the traffic and the time from the hotel to the teltronic facility that is about 4.2 kilometers and that takes me about a half an hour drive 
Um, so that means that 10 a.m. Jose is picking me up, 10.30 we're at the facility, then I have enough time for this interview. Ga een zuidoostelijke richting op Calle de Joaquin Costa en ga dan rechtsaf naar Calle de Escar. 9.7 kilometer to be precise. It's a quarter to 10, let's go downstairs, meet Jose, drive to Teltronic. as always and uh, let me first let me grab a cup of coffee there's still a few minutes to go and uh, I don't think Jose is in a hurry because he's coming from the United States from New Jersey from the office in New Jersey he flew over to here to Zaragoza um, so he will not be in a hurry and uh, probably he will stay here for another few days go back to, uh, to New Jersey I'm just thinking about something here. It, it, I cannot remember that there has been any camera team at the facility of Teltronic. I've never seen images, video images, photo images from the facility. So I'm quite honored to be able to film at Teltronic at the facility. Uh, until now I've only seen the picture of the facility from the outside. But I've never seen the facility from the inside. Um, I, I bet a lot of people who are watching this channel haven't seen the facility from the inside as well. So that makes this trip kind of double interesting. On the one hand, the story about Tetra, on the other hand, the facility of Teltronic. Jose Martin. So you're now based in New Jersey. Are you living in New Jersey or New York? New Jersey. New Jersey. Well, uh, in 2009, I moved to New York City. So I spent uh, five years uh, in the Upper West Side, and, but then I moved uh, to Jersey City uh, across the Hudson River um, because it, it's not practical. Uh, um, big office uh, with technical resources in Manhattan, that is not practical. So we found a better facility in nearby Jersey City, which is right across it's, it's the It's actually, well, to me, it's New York. New it York is, is one yes. big, yeah. It yeah. is the same thing. Well, actually, Jersey City has become some sort of uh, extension of Manhattan. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you're there based since when? Uh, in Jersey City? Yes. Since 2013. Okay, in the same building with that I visited uh, a in few years In the same back? building. Okay. Which is, by the way, a very old uh, building, a national monument. It's an old warehouse, I believe, right? It's an old warehouse uh, from the early 20th century. Yeah, and, and when you want to know more about that visit that was combined with the visit of the end user day of Teltronic at the uh, New Jersey facility, the hotel and New Jersey Transit, by the way, uh, you can see that in the video over here, just on the left side. Okay, so, all right, so that's your base. And from there, you're managing Tetra in the United States. Is only Tetra or is it also P25? Because there was a time that I saw some images of P25 at your website. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we uh, started offering both technologies because uh, Teltronic developed uh, P25 technology as well. But we stopped uh, the P25 business uh, when, because we learned uh, much more uh, about how it works uh, in the US. And it was very difficult. And there are many different frequency bands, uh, simulcast uh, requirements, uh, and it was very complicated. Uh, it required a large investment, and there were little chances uh, of uh, success. Sorry? That is yours. That's mine, That's yeah, exactly. <laughs> I saw the foreign plate. Yeah, exactly. Yes. All right. Okay. Perfect. So you drive. I drive behind you. Okay. 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 All right. So 
it's near the highway. That's interesting. All right, we're there. Teltronic. There you go. So I need to wear this mask, uh, that's company policy here at Teltronic. Um, we're first going to start upstairs at the research and development and customer support and then later on we're going downstairs, which is actually the most impressive stuff. We, I just had a sneak peek and it's kind of interesting to see uh, all of the uh, locations where people are developing the products and, and manufacturing the products. Good. This is not a real tunnel. This is actually a par as part of the Teltronic uh, demo room over here. As you can see, uh, we're coming back here later with the interview of Jose. Let's first do this uh, do this tour with Jose. That was Daniel Foronda. He's going to uh, join us as well. Yeah, <laughs> and you have seen Daniel actually uh, at the facility in New York, New Jersey. So this is the official entrance that was designed uh, in the 1990s. That's impressive. By a, by a famous architect. Uh, this is a uh, projection in the ceiling of the stairs. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a very lazy stairs. You can do two steps. You can take two steps, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's a fantastic view actually outside, yeah. right? You can see the, the pyramid, the mountains with the snow, everything. But not today. Not today not because today. it's uh, a little it's hazy, bit foggy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there is uh, some mist. Today. All right. But in very clear days, uh, you see the mountains have at least the border of France. Okay. Essentially, in this upper floor, the, the main activity is uh, research and development. So, how many people are working here at this location, this this level? Some 300 people. 300. Yes. So. In this area, for example, um, they are developing um, uh, essentially hardware for the radios and on the onboard equipment uh, we supply for trains and other types of vehicles. There are uh, chambers uh, to test the equipment at high temperature and pressure. So you can come in. Yes. This is installed in metro trains. The first customer uh, was Madrid Metro, but now we are supplying similar equipment, for example, to Sydney Metro in Australia. It is combined uh, with uh, all uh, the relevant standards uh, for transportation, uh, including the connectors. This is military grade, because you know trains are shaking all the time and that kind of things. Uh, so you cannot simply design uh, um, simple equipment, put it in a train, and expect that it's going to work much longer than a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, this equipment normally is used for tetra communication. So inside there is a tetra radio. Uh, actually, it is this one. That's the tetra radio. Yes. Okay. But you can also install an additional uh, analog radio. You know that the subways around the world normally do not migrate from analog to digital uh, at once, but they do it line by line, meaning that the trains must be capable of communicating <laughs> through the digital tetra radios and also analog radios in, in a seamless uh, fashion. So this radio is capable of working tetra and analog, but it is also equipped uh, with Wi-Fi and we're going to include LTE. I got a feeling that many of the people are working for a long time already at the Teltronic. Am I right? Yes, you are. Uh, well, the level of uh, rotation, uh, you know, staff is relatively low in this company. So there is young people, but there are also many veterans. There, there are people who were already working for the company back in the 1990s and even earlier, even earlier. Uh, some of the employees have been working in the company for 35 years. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. In my case, it's been 22. Is it difficult to get new people, new staff, uh, specifically in the technical sector? Because mm. uh, I, I see a lot of uh, job availabilities in our industry, uh, specifically in, uh, as, as technicians. 
Yeah, well, it's not so difficult uh, because uh, the University of Zaragoza uh, has a uh, telecommunications engineering school. So many people, many people, uh, they are coming out uh, from the engineering school and they joined Alternic. Jose Martin really took the time to show me the complete Zaragoza facility. From the product development and project planning department on the top floor where we shortly met the head of Tetra department, Ramon Abidias, with who Jose Martin has been working together for the last 22 years, to the ground level where we visited the production lines, where we had a short discussion about the size of the cabinets used for the Madrid Metro of the last decade. Then it was time to visit the printing department where we could see the service mounting device machines at work. This production process always triggers me as it is fascinating to see how fast these machines do their work in order to produce the boards that are installed in the Tetra devices. Accordingly, we visited the FAT and testing area and the logistics and warehouse department where I was able to view an impressive number of component storage. Take a look, this is impressive. Wrong. After row, especially nowadays, it's it's, it's important to have enough components in storage. Finally, we visited the sales and marketing department, where we got to meet marketing manager Miguel Simon and had a short meeting with CEO of Teltronic Juan Ferro, with whom I discussed the future of the company and, in more specific, the road to broadband and the role of Tetra technology today and in the future. So, so what's what's the future? How does the future look like to you? Uh, future probably is, okay, the <clears throat> thing that the, the Tetra and the narrowband technologies are a uh, long uh, life, a long run again, uh, still. Yes. I mean, the, and okay, we are now uh, trying to open a new new uh, business in new verticals and, and trying to, to enter in the broadband uh, business that is going very, very slowly with uh, our own uh, network infrastructure in 4G, basically, basically focused to public safety and, and transportation verticals. Actually, last year we, we signed three important contracts in, for LTE. Okay. That, uh, that we uh, deliver hopefully the, this year, and, uh, and okay, we are also uh, working with uh, the app part in based on the mission critical services. Finally, it was time to pick the brain of Jose Martin and to talk about a topic that stayed in my mind since I met him two years ago in Jersey City. How did he manage to introduce Tetra technology successfully in North America? knowing the technical difficulties and struggles to get the standard approved by the FCC. And then they said, uh, okay, but this is good enough, uh, so let's conduct uh, some uh, pilot in New Jersey and see what happens. So the outcome was extremely successful.